Jimmy, so real a, quick for you, yeah, I, I, I got a question on on J- Haji Wright. If this was November, is he going into your final uh, camp for me? One hundred percent. Yeah, because yes. because of the you, things you that Charlie. To. Yeah, you have to take him. Yeah, I mean, because because you can't. It, it's one thing to ask of striker to hit that switch. You know that he's capable of it, but if he's not playing that way currently, and Charlie can speak to that, we can all speak to this. If you're not playing that way currently, and then all of a sudden you put on the U.S. jersey and all that, you're going to hit this switch and and be another version of yourself. I think there is an argument and a narrative to be built around that. But I'd rather go with the hot hand, somebody who is currently playing well, and not that we're hoping that they play well based on previous experience. And I'm sure we could come up with plenty of examples, both club well, and country, you, where that doesn't could, work out. You can also throw in just fitness in general. You don't have that to worry too. about fitness. The sharpness, right? Sharpness, fitness. And I'd say in a camp, throw in anyone who's, especially at the nine, because I feel like that's the one position that we're really unsure of as far as the future. I mean, Jesus Ferreira is playing like it's his, and he, and he wants to keep it. But in a camp, you can throw in many players who who maybe have not been in in previous camps and get us get a look because all in the in the end, it's just about getting a look. So what I want to add to, and I, I'm glad you brought that into it, Charlie, is the fact that Jesus Ferreira, to your point, is is grabbing this with both hands. He must be having conversations, or people ask him probably after every game. So do you think this will translate into playing in a World Cup? Do you think, you know, I mean, he has to be thinking about it. He has to be getting questions from from family and friends, of course, about where these stands and what are the, what are the I mean, we all went through it. So we know those questions are happening. And then you got to answer it publicly. And, and especially with social media being more prominent, you got to deal with all the comments that are happening there. He looks like one of the only players in the number nine spot that's really taking this opportunity and trying to make it his. And I think Haji Wright's another one who could probably sense it's kind of now or never for me to maybe get on this team. This is a great time to go on a run. And he's really also elevated his game. Whereas, not to say he's getting getting the opportunities, but I did want to bring this up. Ricardo Pepe. Now, Augsburg played this week this weekend against Grudefirth. Grudefirth already going down. A meaningless game. Augsburg is already safe. They're going to stay up. Ricardo Pepe dresses and doesn't play. I can't tell you how frustrating that is that he doesn't play. Now, I just want to say that there's a 23-year-old, Timothy Tillman, who has played in 29 games for Goethe Firth. He came through the Bayern Munich youth system. He can play for the U.S., as can his brother, Malik. And I think we're identified both of them. Those are 29 games in the Bundesliga. Sure, they're going down. He plays He plays in the midfield. I think he might be worth taking a look at as well. But what do we say? I'll go to you first, Heath, on Ricardo Pepe and how disappointed you are that the Augsburg coach couldn't find any goddamn minutes for him in a meaningless game. That's ridiculous. Now, I know the Augsburg coach resigned after this game, which is great news for everybody, I think, but especially for Ricardo Pepe. But still, that really frustrates me. Well, if anything, it makes things more complicated for Ricardo Pepe now, right? Because Mm -hmm. now you've spent all this money on him. That coach was clearly... uh, uh, That was a signal of intent. Last game of the season, your most expensive player, a young up-and-coming, what we think could potentially be a star goal scorer, is on the bench and doesn't play. It was like this, I'm going to go out. I want to finish my, I want to finish on a high. I want to finish with a win. And that guy can't get me the win. And then I'm going to just sort of sail off into the sunset. Whereas now you're going to have another coach come in, a coach that didn't buy Ricardo Pepe, a coach that didn't sign Ricardo Pepe, who's now got the pressure of a 20 million signing and have to figure out what you do with him. But at least you know that going in though. It didn't seem like this, uh, Weinser that ever ever really wanted him. It didn't. You'd, seem you'd like be an American shocked. Ownership. You'd be as shocked at how often a club will buy a player that a coach doesn't want, um, or a sports director and a coach don't get along. <laughs> Rumble and, Lukaku, yeah. oh, like it's, the Lukaku. like the amount of the amount of time it, it happens, crazy. and the, it's at the detriment of the player. Right? You have somebody like the coaches on the field, and yeah, they're part of the signings, and they should be. And when things are 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 sort of rhythmic uh, or fluid, they they work together. But a sporting director or a sporting director and a board or an ownership group can go out and be like, we need to have a splash. We need to go bi- get this big signing. And a coach could be like, but that doesn't help me. You know, I need somebody now because we're fighting relegation. And so I understand both sides of that argument. But now you have a new coach that's got to come in. And I'm hoping that you go preseason June, July, or whenever it's going to be, say July. And that coach, is, they have a talk beforehand that's like, either you're going to be part of my plans as a starter or we're going to send you out on loan. That's the best case scenario now because the new coach is going to come in. The club's going to be like, hey, we just spent all this money. Try with this guy. And again, Ricardo Pepe still has to do his job. He has to score goals. He has to contribute. He has to train hard. He has to do all the things that make a professional good and develop. But if you're Pepe's agent or representatives, you've got to be carving out this, hey, like five, six weeks, 
and maybe even through the start of the season, first couple of games, and we're going to make a decision on his future, at least to send him on loan somewhere else where he can get games. Okay, okay. Charlie, I know you want to chime in here, but I want to throw another name out there. Tyler Adams only got to play the last 18 minutes for mm -hmm. RB Leipzig this past weekend. And in a game that they needed to win, and they didn't get the win, but they still kind of backed in to finishing in the top four, very similar to Chelsea last season, uh, the last day or last weekend. And and I feel like he's another one that probably needs to move because it doesn't feel like their manager, Domenico Tedesco, really sees him as the guy. So so we're, it's going to lead to Serginho Des because Xavi said he could go. But I kind of want to hear your thoughts on on what Pepe's situation and, and mm -hmm. Tyler Adams because – there's a lot of guys now that I feel like are in the balance. And this is a big, big summer, obviously, because you want to get on that World Cup team playing. You want to be playing with your team, not sitting on the bench and hoping you get 15 minutes. Well, I can tell you one thing. In If you're in Ricardo Pepe's shoes, you're looking at what Jesus Ferreira is able to do. Someone you were playing over in FC Dallas. And now he's a man on fire. Nine goals, leading Major League Soccer. You're got that new contract, bench. too. Got you, that big contract you, to stay got home. Got that big contract. <laughs> You're stay. You're you're in Germany, not playing. It fe it feels like you're you've hit rock bottom, and this is a good moment for Ricardo Pepe to build off that resilience, that character, to show that hey, okay, the coach that didn't believe in me, he's gone. That gives me hope heading into preseason, and that's got to be his mentality: is I got to play next year, and I got to be the number one striker, so I have to come in fit and in form. It. it I would have liked to still see him in the national team camp, even though Greg said, Hey, we're going to give you a rest for me. That's you're not playing right now. So I can't call you in and mm -hmm. let me dress it up as I'm giving you a, a mental break. It would, I think it would benefit him to be in camp just to get the sharpness right to head into preseason. Now he's probably got to, got to stick, stick around the training facility and just work because whoever that yeah, new man scored in eight is, months or nine months, gotta, it's almost nine you months have to impress. Uh, and then I think in terms of Tyler Adams, the, the player who was playing in front of him has been linked to Bayern Munich. So if he does go, that's, there's your, you know, he's sure, the natural right, replacement. Right, right. And a lot of teams across Europe already value Tyler Adams. So it's either they sell uh Lamer who's playing in front of him or he, he stays uh, or, or he gets sold somewhere right, else. Right, so I right. think Tyler Adams, it's not really, I'm not really concerned about him. Just I am his mentality and the way he plays. Go ahead, Heath. I mean, my, my only worry is that, again, Tedesco doesn't clearly – I mean, again, it's all relative to a new season. Tyler Adams has shown he can be a consistent starter in the team when he's not injured and things like that. But I do wonder about Tyler Adams being so versatile that he's almost settling in under under Tedesco as as a, a guy that you can use at any point. Super and utility again, guy. Super utility. And the fact that you've got a long season, you're going to be in, in playing Champions League and all these things that he's that one where if you sell on Lamer, who do you bring in uh, – to compete for Tyler Adams and maybe he's going through the, and don't get me wrong. I want Tyler to be fighting for his spot all the time. Cause I think it's going to get the best out of Tyler. But if a, if a manager has an idea of like, maybe he's not the guy that I need there. Is he just going to sell one and then go on and look for one knowing that there's going to be another 19 or 20 year old up and coming or 21 year old up and coming player that fits mm -hmm. within the system that they can bring in to be the next guy that they want to sell to Bayern Munich. And Tyler Adams might fall victim to that, but, but I do, but, uh, but that's yeah. a player you worry about. I mean, of of all the U.S. men's national team players, that's I, I, the, no, that only you worry only about his situation. Only because of the fact that he, I'm not worried about his situation. There's plenty of players I'm worried about. Go go on to any list, and we've got about 14 guys in Europe this <laughs> this weekend yeah. that were dressed but did not play, or at least they're dressing. You know, that's good. Uh, but but it's more the fact that like Tyler Adams is a player that's crucial for us, and I'd hate to see another six months go by where he is. You know, in one out to playing the closing sparingly, 17 minutes. Yeah. You know, use yeah, sparingly right, where. Right. It just sort of feels like, again, another conversation needs to be had in this offseason of saying, is a new challenge out there for Tyler Adams? Where maybe he's going to have to go and compete anywhere at the size of a club that uh, RB Leipzig, but he's going to get a fresh start to compete and a fresh set of eyes to get that time and, and earn the respect of a new manager.